Now, for the latest, we're joined by our Middle East correspondent, Annette Young, who's on the phone. She's in Ashdod, that's the port city in southern Israel, where the Israeli government had been requesting that the flotilla drop anchor. Annette, thanks for joining us. As you speak, we're going to be seeing live images coming in there from Ashdod. Now, we heard the Israeli deputy foreign minister, who spoke just a short while ago, tell us more about is Israel's version of what actually happened on those boats. Well, the Israeli military are insisting that as far as they're concerned, it was a case of pre-planned violence. They tell the media here that uh, the soldiers were virtually lynched as they uh, dropped on the deck, particularly of the largest vessel, the Mamara, uh, by activists who were carrying sticks, knives, and in some cases, iron bars. Uh, they claim that uh, some of the activists actually managed to grab hold of uh, two of the commando's guns, and uh, as a result, uh, there was an exchange of fire. They argue that under the rules of engagement, troops are allowed to open fire if they feel their lives are under threat. They claim that this was very much the case when they uh, dropped on board uh, the uh, vessel, the Mara. Um, what we hear is uh, from the Israelis is that uh, uh, they do not view it as a, a case of strict humanitarian uh, aid that uh, they believe that there were pistols on board those vessels and say that they have evidence as such. So uh, that is uh, the argument as far as the Israelis are concerned. Now, Annette, for now it does seem like a scenario that just went dreadfully wrong. We know that both sides were expecting the flotilla to be intercepted by Israel, but both sides were saying that they expected no violence. That's right. I mean, this was very much a worst-case scenario, and uh, the Israeli officials had always said that, that they would use limited force if need be, stressing the phrase, if need be. Uh, of course, as far as the organisers of this particular humanitarian mission are concerned, they say they had no wish for any violence. All they wanted to do was to get that 10,000 tonnes of aid through to Gaza. Um, but uh, obviously, uh, something went dreadfully askew. Um, what we do understand is around, uh, just around midnight, uh, the naval ship first intercepted the convoy, that they issued uh, warning messages to those on board, asking them to desist from entering the 20-mile uh, nautical zone uh, exclusion zone that has been enforced by uh, the Israelis uh, off uh, Gaza's coastline, um, and that around four in the morning, given that the convoy continued in that direction, uh, they said they had no other choice but to board the ships. Now, the original plan was to basically commandeer the uh, ships in a non-violent fashion, um, and then tow them to Ashdod, which is where I am now, uh, and uh, for those passengers to then be taken off and for the goods to be confiscated. Uh, but uh, obviously, as we say, things went dreadfully wrong in the early hours of this morning. Annette, we do know that humanitarian ships have headed towards Gaza in the past, but uh, we've never seen an outbreak of violence like this. Tell us about those past attempts. There were several attempts back in 2008, um, but uh, they came to and, and they were successful. But uh, that quickly came to a halt uh, during uh, the war in Gaza at the end of December 2008, where another ship attempted to break the blockade and was seized by the uh, Israeli Navy. Um, the thing about this particular convoy, it's the largest ever attempt to uh, circumvent uh, this uh, blockade, um, and uh, on board those ships uh, are at least uh, seven. 100 uh, activists from all parts of the world. They include a Nobel Peace Prize laureate, uh, at least uh, uh, a number of European parliamentarians, even some Israelis, uh, including an Arab Israeli Knesset member. Um, uh, again, at this stage, we still don't have the exact breakdown of who's been injured and who's been killed. Uh, those details obviously will be revealed as the afternoon wears on. All right. Thanks so much. Our correspondent, Annette Young, reporting there from Ashdod.